I've told you all that I would get you a programming video for this and I haven't and I do apologize for that but the fact remains is that the UV5R has been out for a very long time and there's a lot of videos out there showing you how to program it both via the keypad or also through this program called Chirp and getting a cable to hook into it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave some links down below and you can check out um, the best place that I've seen for a lot of these videos is a guy called Not a Rubicon. If you don't want to go through a hell hole of a bunch of button presses and programming and software and all that other stuff, there's one trick at the very end and it can be solved with a drill bit. Now this is not a Rubicon Productions, this is Randy. Randy is a pretty cool guy. He's got a pretty perverted sense of humor though, so just take it with a grain of salt. But the fact remains is, is that this guy is the person that you want to follow as far as learning how to use this. Now this here shows you how to program a Bofang UV5R to listen to other walkie-talkies on FRS, GMRS, and MURS. There is a way to do it um, on some software. Now with the software, you're gonna notice that this is an older video, it's three years ago, but let me tell you something, the software for Chirp pretty much looks exactly the same and you're not going to lose anything by following this. This is still gonna show you how to program if you have a programming cable. And lastly, this is how to program the UV5R. This is just using for off-roading, hiking, airsoft, and that is using the keypad. And with this one, you'll notice down below that you have a step-by-step -step guide on how to get your license and a channel frequency conversion list. So this gives you the frequencies that you're allowed to use. So this is where you need to go for this. Here's the thing, is that the easiest way to use one of these legally in Canada, you don't need a license, and in the U.S., you have to pay for a license, and you can use it on a certain amount of frequencies. Walkie-talkies are kind of fun. I want you to consider doing ham radio. You do have to take a test, and you have to prove that you know what's going on in radio communications. And part of that is so that you know the safe operation of these radios. And I know a few people are going to say, yeah, it's not that powerful, and it's not that big of a deal. Well... <laughs> fact remains is, is that something like this can do damage to electronic equipment and you got to be safe about using it, especially if you go to hospitals. Now, why am I bringing this up? Just like in my previous video is, is that I know that a few people go to children's hospitals or hospitals in general to cheer people up, which they should as a Ghostbuster. But keep in mind that transmitting or having this thing live there can be a big problem. So just don't turn it on or you can lock it. Now you can lock it, but the thing is, is that you can unlock it by accident. I do, however, have another solution. These antennas are very inexpensive and you can buy them a dime a dozen. You can also send a drill bit down through the center of this thing and screw out all the workings. So that guy is not transmitting anywhere ever again so that this radio can only transmit on this little tiny stub and that has basically made it completely ineffective unless you are right on top of it so if you want to make this safe but still have this thing light up and you know make beeps when you press the button grab an extra antenna and drill the bottom out it's really that simple one thing that i have found is that there are quite a few Ghostbusters groups that have a nerd just like me that has their ham radio license. And we are more than willing to take your radio and program it so that it's safe, usable, and legal, and even help you on the walkthrough on how to get your license for all this kind of stuff. So, short video, just want to recap. You want to program these and use them. Make sure that you take a look at your country's laws and regulations. I'm not an expert in any of that stuff as far as laws and regulations go. But I do know that in some countries you do need to be regulated to use it on GMRS bands. And some of the frequencies that this thing's capable of working on are ham radio bands. And you got to be licensed for it. And there's a good reason for it. If you are interested in ham radio, I do have another channel called the Ham Radio Rookie. And I am just on my beginning journey of ham radio, which is really kind of cool. And maybe you can follow along with that. 